All right, everyone. So for another part of our stream survey, we're gonna do stream gradient or how much the stream goes down uh, over a hundred foot section in the stream. So what our decrease in slope is, all of that. Um, you may have seen this piece of gear before. This is a Stadia rod. This is what's gonna be used with our engineering level and our tripod and, and our tape measure to get that, like I said, hundred feet across the stream to see how um, the slope goes down or your, your gradient. Uh, so as you can see here, we have red numbers, black numbers, little red numbers, ton of tick marks going on. Uh, the way you're gonna read this, you're gonna have your engineering level. It's gonna be set up in the stream over um, the tape measure. You're gonna be set over the 50 foot mark so you have 50 feet on each side. We're gonna set our engineering level uh, up right there. Stadia rod, someone will be at the end of the stream and someone's gonna be down on this side. We're gonna have them hold the stadia rod straight up and down. This extends actually some more. Um, and you're gonna be able to see it through that. Inside the engineering level, you have some crosshairs that look like a gun sight. Uh, with the gun sight, you're going to actually line that up on the studio rod and it'll get us what our elevation is at the top and at the bottom. So, you read your big red number first. So this would be three. And in the engineering level, you may not always be able to see these big numbers. That's why these little red ones are here. They're for your help. So, we're going to read the big number first. Three. And we're going to do a point. Little tick marks on the side here are graduate in intensive feet. So you have this point here which points to the one. So. As we know, those little red numbers that are on here, we use Darzo's green on the board because we don't have a red marker, but we know that we're at three feet. So 3.10, 3.11 on this lower mark, 3.12 up on this top, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15. We have that more of a little point right here, which is shown on our Sadia rod, three, 3 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, because we have that pointed um, tick mark on that. This is our engineering level and tripod. Um, basically, when you're setting this up, the only thing you have to worry about is making sure that it's level so you get an accurate reading. So if you look on, on this side here, we have our bubble, our leveling bubble, and it has to be within the inner circle there. And these little knobs along the side help you adjust to maneuver it within the bubble. So once you get to your stream, the first thing that you're gonna, gonna wanna do is uh, have someone go get a water sample. So I'm gonna instruct Matt here to get the water sample. The reason we get it at first is because once you get in the stream, you're gonna muck it up. A lot of turbidity, a lot of solids are gonna come up. You don't know what you could bring in. Um, you just wanna do that first uh, so you get a nice clean water sample. So the next thing here, uh, we're gonna do the gradient or the slope of the stream. So we're gonna set a 100 foot section with the tape measure here all the way until we get to 100 feet. And we'll be able to see the drop in the slope or the gradient of the stream. So here, Matt and I are gonna do this now. So I'm gonna go right into the middle of the stream. Matt's gonna go up about 100 feet. And uh, just gonna wait. So here, Matt and I are setting up the engineering level and the tripod, as we talked about earlier. Um, Matt has got it all leveled. We have a uh, 50 or 100 foot tape measure measured out here, all the way to the top of the stream, down to the bottom. And we're over the 50 mark, 50 foot mark right here, so that we can look half up, half down. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Matt do here is look through this site. Like I said earlier, there's a gun site in there. Ray is down there with a stadia pole. He is going to read what the numbers on that stadia rod are, and that will be our downstream reading. Once we get our downstream reading, we're gonna actually have Ray move up to the upstream, and then we're gonna get our upstream reading. And then once we get back in the classroom, we will be able to do the math to understand um, what our gradient is. And did you get a number, Matt? Yeah. All right, what is your number? 5.42. Uh, so once we got our downstream reading, we're actually going to move this engineering level to the upstream location. Well, not move exactly, but turn it. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you stay level the entire time. And, and when you are leveling it, you're going to want to check the entire thing all the way around. All right, so now we are looking up at uh, the upstream site. We have Ray up there again with the stadia rod. Matt's going to take a look through this, get us a number. And then, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll do that all in the lab. And as you can see here, we have our underfoot section. Ray's over there. 
7.68. This is gonna give you your velocity. It's also gonna give you your water depth. Um, so when we go out in the field and use this, we figure out the discharge, which is how much the water is going through a certain area. Once it rains or there's a bunch of outflow somewhere, your stream discharge will increase. So here we have a lot of limes. Um, these are graduated in tenths of feet. So we have triple lines here, which are a foot. We have double lines, which are half. And then these single ones are all tenths of feet. So if we go from the bottom up, we have one foot, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and two feet right here. So those are your tenths of feet in graduation. Um, you also, fun thing here, you have some numbers on this side of the stick and numbers as of right here. So what we do with these uh, tick marks, like I said, is get your water depth. So once we get in the water, we'll be able to see what our water depth is, but for just for example here, I'm gonna say, hey, we have a water depth at about 1.5. So you wanna have this meter in about 60% of the water column. That's where you're gonna get the most flow or the most exact flow in your stream. So if you have the meter too close to the surface, you have surface tension, there's a lot of weird things going on, um, won't actually give you your, your right velocity. And if it's too close to the bottom, you have scouring and the water's hitting the bottom weird, big rocks. Um, it may not give you your exact flow. So that's why we say the 60% of the water. So that's where these numbers and this comes into play. Um, you have 1.5 feet, which is right down here. I'm gonna actually move this hole right here to 1.5 up here. So I'm gonna take that one. I'm gonna press my finger down on this button here. I'm gonna bring it up and I'm gonna go to 1.5. Because as you can see here, we have zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So we now moved that number, which corresponds with our water depth if we were in the water, and this comes into about 60% of the water column. Obviously, it's not all the way up at 1.5 because that would be pretty much at the surface and it's not at the bottom. It's about 60% of the water column, so. All right, so now we're gonna do our flow or um, our discharge. So what we're gonna have here, we're gonna have Ray and Matt set up in an area of laminar flow. Uh, laminar flow is really where there's no riffles, no large boulders, no really diversion of the flow. Not really breaking the surface, but coming over more of like a run. Um, so that's where you're gonna get most of your adequate flow. So what we're gonna do here, they're gonna take the width. This is gonna be your instantaneous width. We are only taking the width one single time. Um, so now I'm gonna have them set it up if you'd like to go. We don't have the biggest stretch of stream here, but what we could do. Um, oh wow, look at that, five feet exactly. We have our five foot measurement of stream here and we're going to divide because we're gonna do five measurements in total. We're gonna divide it by six. We're gonna take five divided by six, which gives us 0.8. We're going to move 0.8 each time to make sure that we go across the stream in the right fashion. All right, so as we can see here, we have our water depth at about 0.4. So those double lines are 0.5, triple lines are feet, and we're just underneath right there. So Matt's gonna move the meter so it's in that perfect position. So he's gonna put the zero on the three and then we're gonna get our reading from our meter right here. And this will give us our velocity. This is giving us our depth and we have our width here. So what is the measurement on there? Right. 0.28. 0 0.28. So Ray over here will write that down and then we'll continue across. Okay, so here we have our server sampler. This is used to collect macroinvertebrates, which are the bugs and whatnot that live underneath the stream bed or within the stream bed and all the interstitial spices and all that kind of stuff. So here we have, again, that server sampler. It's a one foot by one foot square here. Uh, we are going to have a bag on it. This is what's gonna collect all the insects. Um, so I have Matt here, who's my buddy. We have Ray here holding our sample jar. Uh, typically in a stream survey, we're gonna do three of these, but for this sake right now, we're just gonna do one uh, to show you how this works. So what you're gonna do is lay this in the stream bed in a riffly area, which we have right here. Uh, you're gonna have a buddy that's going to be able to hold this down with you. 
and you're gonna dig six inches down within the entire square. So you're gonna rub off all of these rocks. Once we've collected all that, Matt's gonna grab the server sampler and we're actually gonna wash all of that stuff down into the bottom. So he's gonna close it up and go like that. Get all the collection at the bottom. Look like we got a lot of stuff going on here. And what we're gonna do is turn this bag inside out. Uh, Ray, would I be able to have that? Thank you. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of water in this sample jar. What we're gonna do, Ray, can you come hold this for me? We're gonna fold this inside out the entire time. And then we're gonna grab scoopfuls of these bugs and the rocks and everything that came in here right into this jar. Matt did a great job. And what we're gonna do then is to get, make sure that we got everything. We're gonna dip the corner into the water in, in, in the sample jar. So we're gonna do a little part at a time. Clean that nice off. 